Thank you. Let's turn our Bibles to book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. The title of the message is, One thing to remember during these last days. One thing to remember during these last days. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1, the Bible says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for today that we get to be alive here on earth, Lord, and have um, a Bible-believing church that we may come to, Lord God that we may worship you in truth and in spirit. Father God, we pray that you please fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit. Please give him the authority, power, the conviction unto us, Lord God, that he may preach unto us a sermon that will change our hearts and our minds from the ways that we think of our own ways, Lord, for it's not the truth, Lord. And help us to abide in your word and obey your commandments, Lord. For your word, the King James Bible, is the light and the truth in this dark world that we live in. Father God, we pray that you uh, please clear our minds, clear our hearts, that we may focus solely on your word and the preaching, Lord God. And Father, please help us not to have strive, envying, uh, hatred towards any of the brethren, Lord God. Help us to love the lost souls in this world. Help us to go out and preach your word, the gospel, at any given moment to anybody uh, that they may get saved, Lord God. And help us to, to have the striving towards you, Lord God, and to seek you, Lord God, in any given moment, whether it be good or bad. Uh, help us to always come to you, Lord God. But Father, we pray that you please bless our day. Help us to focus on you. Help us to lift you up, Lord Jesus Christ, to exalt you, to edify the brothers and sisters here. And Lord God, we pray that the brothers and sisters that's not here today, please be with them, comfort them, fill them with your Holy Spirit, and watch over them, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 So, after you heard the title of the message, you know, one thing to remember during these last days, and a lot of things are probably going through your head. You know, one thing, right? We have many things to remember. You know, we have, you know, second advent, rapture. We have heaven, hell. We have lost souls out there. We have the word of God. We have relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, so on, so on. There are many things to consider, to remember. But as I was preparing, there's one thing that we do have to remember, which encompasses all of those things. The real thing that you and I have to remember during these last days is, are you making someone better today? That's a real question you and I have to ask every day. Are you making someone better today? You know, as our brethren always pray for and talk about, salvation of lost souls out there. That's part of it. You know, are you making someone better today? We live in an age where everybody's so selfish, including many of the Bible believers. Amen. I mean, we read our text verse today. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. 
Everybody wants to be applauded. Everybody wants their name to be out there. Everybody wants people in the church to know who they are. Many times, people who talk about love, many times who people talk about charity, many times people who talk about you know, this and that, people who are very outspoken, people who always talk about this and that, helping other brothers and sisters in Christ, many times they're the ones that who split the church in half. Many times they're the one who's the proud one. Many, time, many times they're the ones that who in the behind the back always criticizes, you know, pastors and pastors' wives and other brethren. You have to understand today, you know, as you're listening to this message, why are you listening to this message? Why are you a Christian? What is the goal of your life on a daily basis? Because of the materialism out there, many of the Christians' goal in each day is to advance in their career, is to make more money, is to buy a better house, better car, you know, show off to other people. But is that really what's the most important thing during these last days? I mean, will someone come to the Lord Jesus Christ if you have a bigger house or better house? Will someone come to Lord Jesus Christ if you have a better car? Will someone come to Lord Jesus Christ if you're better looking, you know, more prettier? Will someone come to Lord Jesus Christ if you flaunt all your wealth and, you know, physical abilities and your intellectuals? No, that's not the answer. But unfortunately, many Christians nowadays, so-called Bible-believing Christians, all they look at is the numbers, all they look at is their looks, all they look at is, you know, their bank account. You know, nothing wrong with it if you do your best and Lord blesses it. But you don't think about making someone better. All you're thinking about is yourself. All you're thinking about is me, 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 me. What should be the easiest thing to do is often the hardest thing to do. What the Bible says, you know, Ephesians 4.32, it says, Be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. But you don't do it. You're not tenderhearted. You're not kind to one another. You're not kind to even your own family members. How are you going to make anybody better if you can't even make your family members better? As a mother, as a father, as a child, as a husband, as wife, I mean, are you making people in your household better? If you can't even start from your own household, how can you even think about doing it outside? People will see you as a hypocrite. People will see you as a double-minded. People will see you as a liar. And father of lies is the devil. So when you truly think about it, your reflection of your life is reflection of the devil. It's not Lord Jesus Christ. It's the devil. People see devil in you. That's why they don't come to the knowledge of truth. People see devil in you because that's why they don't want to get saved. People see devil in you. That's why they don't want to come to church. That's why you have to realize today, constantly you have to ask yourself, am I making someone better today? Are you? I mean, or am I all about me, me, me? When Bible talks about brotherly love, in Romans 12, 10, if you drop B and R, it's other, right? Yes. It's always emphasis is in other, right? I mean, you can't have brotherly love without other. Then when you look at yourself, I mean, do you truly think about others more than yourself? If all of the congregation and all the listeners truly care about others better than themselves, We'll never have quarrels. We'll never have backbiting. We'll never have gossip. You'll never have fighting. Everybody will be out there actually witnessing for yeah. the lost souls out there. In these last days, in this Laodicean age where lukewarm Christians kick Lord Jesus out the door. Yeah. Even though he's out there waiting, knocking on the door. Right. And you are one of those lukewarm Christians. And don't kid yourself. I'm not like that. I come to Bible-believing church. I participate in ministries. I do street preaching. You know, I, you know, do all this stuff. But it doesn't matter. I mean, are you doing it for your own self-interest? Or are you doing it for lost souls out there? I mean, obviously, if you are trying to make someone better, you understand that you need sacrifice. You have to get rid of your selfish ways. Many times, we lose people in the ministry because... Especially people know a lot nowadays. 
They know we are in the last days. They do things just for their own self-interest. Why are you gathering knowledge? And you know, I mention it over and over because it's so dangerous. You know, people come to you know, our website, people come to our church, a lot of times because you guys are looking for conspiracy theory, or you're into conspiracy theory, right? And we have many, many different titles that works with the algorithms out there, and they lead you to it. And for some, you're seeking the truth, and you're here. You found the truth. However, after you have found the truth, you have to understand where your interests are now. Are you still selfish? All you want to do is gather as much, as many, this peculiar and unique information out there. A lot of times through Dr. Ruckman, a lot of times through Dr. Jin Kim. And then you want to get your knowledge puffed up and you want to show off to people. Or are you that type of person who actually wants to know more about the Word of God so that you can make someone better today? Because... I guarantee you, when someone's needing the doctrinal explanation of salvation, they don't need to hear about aliens. They don't need to hear about sons of God. They don't need to hear about all those things. Yeah. They don't even need to hear about revelation and all those things, what's going to happen in the millennium and afterwards. No. They just need to know about salvation. Yeah. If they need to know about justification, explain to them. Adoption, explain to them. If they need to know about, you know, propitiation and all those shuns out there when it comes to, you know, salvation doctrine, you've got to be able to explain to them. I mean, you can't be a Bible-believing babies all your life. Amen. I mean, how long have you been saved? Uh, were you saved yesterday? No, many of you guys have been saved for a long, long time, many, many years. You're not making anybody better because your knowledge doesn't grow like it should. Yeah. Your wisdom, you have no wisdom to get from God because you have zero knowledge. Amen. You don't know what to do. I mean, you, you, I mean, you're out there and someone asks you, where am I going after I die? You're going to hell. Okay, I know that. But hey, you know, I want to be justified. Oh, what is justified, man? You explain to me first. You don't even know. And you know what? You know, I, I come from an orphanage, man. And when I got adopted, that was the greatest feeling ever. You know, but I heard some Christians talking about adoption. You know, as a child of God. What does that even mean? You're like, ah, man, you know what? You can use to read more Bible, you know? Yeah. You know what? You got to come to church. You got to talk to the pastor, you know? They're, he, they're the only one who could explain it to you. Yeah. I mean, what if you're out there on a plane and you're on your way down and you're going to die within the next 30 seconds, one yeah. hour? I mean, one, 10 minutes. What are you going to do? Hey, wait, 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 wait. Let me try to get a hold of my pastor, you know? So I could explain that to you. You know, no. You have to know. Amen. If you truly want to make someone better, if you truly want to make sure that you're being a good testimony example to others, you have to understand that during these last days, I can't live for myself. You can't. No. You got to live for others. I shared this many, many times. You know, you know General Booth's like, last words were others. You know, he'd say, you know, would you leave a you know, word for others? to, you know, remind you of your general booth. And he's like, yeah, others. And he just lived for others all his life. And during these last days, if you don't ask yourself, you know, am I making someone better today? Then you're always going to be a selfish Christian. You're always going to be a, someone who brings contention, gossip, division, and bad example to the church. That's why as you ask this question, you know, first thing, point number one is, I mean, are you selfish? That's number one. Are you selfish? Are you all about your self-interest? In any organization, whether it's local church, whether it's corporation, whether it's nonprofit, whether it's just little club out there, you know, out in the, you know, your own area, even for little kids. The real question is, I mean, are you selfish? Are you all about your self-interest? Do you even care about, you know, people around you? Do you even care about organization? Do you care about others, period? If you don't, then it will just show. 
Everything that you do is out of your own interest. When it's out of your own interest, how in the world are you going to avoid strife and vain glory? You're going to be full of strife and vain glory because it's all about you, 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 you. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? I mean, we always say you got to pray, right? You got to read your Bible. Who do you pray for first? Think about it. I mean, are you praying for lost souls out there? Are you praying for your brethren, body of Christ out there? Are you praying for your shepherds and leaders out there? Or are you just go straight to yourself? You know, selfish person that you are. Lord, you know what? You know, I have, I, I need this. So I'm going to ask you to give me that, right? Lord, I don't know, this and this and that, you know? And then at the end of your prayer, when you have like a minute or two left, you're like, Lord, I pray for the whole church. I pray for all the lost house out there, and I do everything. So, I mean, if you, even if you pray 10 minutes, probably like less than 10%. It's about other things and other people, and it's all about you, your selfish ways, right? Yes. As Christians, you will never get out of a baby state and carnal state if you don't get out of that self-interest state. Amen. Obviously, in order for you to make someone better, you have to make yourself better, according to the Word of God, and that's getting rid of your old nature. Amen. Leave it on the cross and follow the new man and be filled with the Holy Ghost always. Yes. Then you could truly make others better. And that is a good way for you to grow. But many times, all you're thinking is about you. Okay, how is that brother, how's that sister going to make me feel better at church today? Right? You know, it's all about me. I want to come to church. I want to have a good time at church. Eh, word of God is good and that, you know. But you don't care about Word of God too much. You don't care about preaching too much. You, know, you don't care about doctrines too much. You know, so all you're focusing on, you know, what? after church, I want to feel good. And you become this, you know, this, you're like no better than charismatics out there. You know, you become all about emotions and feelings, right? When the Word of God should give you strength, when the Word of God should sanctify you, when the Word of God should change your heart, you're just carnal Christian. So all you're thinking about is, how am I going to get my, how am I going to feel better after coming to church? You know? Is that why you come to church? Amen. I mean, you just come to church to just feel better, right? I feel like I'm something when I come to church. Then what about outside the church? What are you, right? I mean, you don't feel any worth outside the church. You don't do anything outside the church. Your daily life is full of misery. Your daily life is full of nothingness. Your daily life is full of non-accomplishments. Your daily life is all about just you and you. So, man, when you don't think about others, when you don't think about making someone better today, there's n you don't get anything out of your day. Simple as that. Because it is already, it should be instilled in you that number one thing after you get saved is that, you know, I have to grow my relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. So that's just obvious. You know, don't even ask that question anymore, you know. Should I spend more time with the Lord? Yes. Should I read Bible more? Yes. Right? I mean, all those things are given. Holy Spirit already answers to your heart. Already moving you. So those are things that you have to do already. But in practical sense, as Christians, you have to make someone better in your life each day. So you look at the past one week, past couple weeks, even, you know, to the times of summer camp. I mean, have you made someone better, right? Spiritually speaking, not something stupid and dumb, Right? And I made someone sin more. You know, you know, I made someone feel better, you know, by you know participating in their dirty jokes, you know, and the worldly things, watching worldly things together. So I made them better. That's not what making someone better means as a Bible believing Christian. Have you made someone better because of your actions as a Christian and your thoughts? Right? 
Actions will not come unless it starts from your heart. If you just try to do it forcibly, it would eventually just dissipate. It's like a vapor that appears for a little time, and then it's gone. Since you don't do it from your heart, because you're full of self-interest, it just cannot continue. He said, I, I have love for the lost souls out there. And a lot of times, you pass out tracks so that people could see you passing out tracks. A lot of times, you witness so that people could see you witness. When people stop seeing you, when people stop looking, you don't do it. How many Christians out there, how many of you guys out there, you only do it when people see you doing it? When someone's watching. <laughs> Inside the church, you're like, oh, I love having fellowship with brethren. I love every one of my brethren. They're body of Christ, you know. And they're so nice and everything, you know, inside the church when people are looking. But, uh-oh, just between you and that person alone. You're just looking at each other. You're, I mean, it's like as cold as ice. It's like Arctic circle, you know. But when someone else comes in, suddenly you start opening your mouth. Oh, brother, how sister, you know. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, writings on the wall, who are you trying to fool? Brethren, people are not dumb and stupid like you think they're dumb and stupid. Other Christians are very smart when it comes to those things. People are very smart at reading other people when they're trying to glorify themselves, when they're full of self-interest, when they're full of pride, and they just want to show off. That's simple. That's human nature. That's why news is all about bad stuff. News is all about, you know, figuring out what will interest people, and those things are bad things, bad emotions, you know, bad characters. So you look at yourself when you ask this question, you know, am I making someone better today? Number one, I mean, am I just selfish? You know, best thing to do is for you to just admit it. Yeah. You're naturally, you and I are just selfish people. Amen. Just selfish. Just admit it. I mean, last thing you could want to answer is, you know what, I'm not selfish. <laughs> you know? Then you're the selfish person I'm out there. Selfish. It's like, you know, you ask someone, are you a sinner? No, no, I'm not a sinner, you know? I only lie here and there, you know? <laughs> well, you know, I didn't go out there and kill anybody, you know? I didn't steal or rob. Man. You, usually those are the people, most self-righteous people out yeah. there. And unfortunately, along that note, many of the children who grows up in the church, who only think the bad thing is, you know, lying about, you know, what they did, you know, at school, or lying about their grades, they are the most selfish people. Yes. Man, how about that, huh? Many of the kids here who grew up inside the church, you guys are the most selfish people in the whole Christian world. You know what? Let's include the whole wide world. Because you've been taught the best. You learn about the King James Bible at an early age. You got saved before you were like eight, nine years old. Amen. And then you think that you're full of Bible, you're full of preaching, you're always filled with the Spirit. And then now your eyes are just looking at other people. Uh -oh. huh. Wow, this brother, this sister, you know, they just got saved, man, but they got a lot of baggage, you know. I gotta stay away from them, you know. I gotta hang out with my own crowd, you know. Oh, no. Like uh, Jimmy and Jane, who I grew up with, you know. They're, they're it. You know, we, we speak the same language. We understand the same things. You know, and we gossip the same way. So we're going to stick together. And one thing that you don't see is that people who get saved later in their life, you know, they'll regret getting saved later in their life, but they're a lot more appreciative. They have a lot less self in them because they went through a lot. right? But you people who grew up inside the church by grace of God, instead of having more charity, instead of thinking about other, more about others, all you're, you're just selfish people, you know. 
And then, you know, when it comes to certain sins and stuff, you're like, you know what? I only lie once. And what do you say? Well, I'm better than that Christian. I'm better than that, you know, adult who just came and got saved because I grew up in church. I mean, is that an attitude you have? Like, oh, yeah, I've been in church more than those people, so I'm better. I grew up inside the church, you know. How dare you think that, you know, me and that other, you know, new Christian is the same. I'm more mature, right? I know more Bible. I want more people to the Lord. Oh, it's me you're talking about. How dare you compare me and the other brother or sister? I mean, that's what devil wants you to think right away. Yeah. That's what flesh talking through you. Yes. That's why if you especially grew up inside the church, you have to constantly check your heart. Amen. You constantly have to check if you are making other people worse because of you and your attitude and the way you treat other people, your family as well. Uh, the common thing is that because church people are so selfish, when new believers come to the church, they think everybody's an angel, right? Okay, let's, you know, for doctrinal people out there, we know, you know, angels are males, right? Without wings, right? Yes. But just thinking about, you know, how general people think, angels are, you know, the most kind-hearted, tender-hearted beings out there. So they come. They're like, oh, man, I'm going to grow as a Christian in this loving environment. Instead, right away, their hope and dreams and everything is just dashed away, broken by the behaviors of Christians who's been in the church for many, many years. Yes. There's no hospitality, right? There's no charity. I mean, give you, I don't even know what kind of eyes you guys give to each other. Uh, I guess you give some kind of eyes to each other, right? I don't know if it's red eye, pink eye, stink eye, you know. <laughs> and then, like, the new Christians feel like, oh, man, did I wear something wrong? Did I do something wrong? Is something on my face, right? And then it's just that, you know, this cold breeze, you know, that gives you the chills just come your way, right? It's like they don't even have to open their mouth. You don't have to open your mouth. Just your appearance, your behavior, just shoots it out that way, yes. right? It's like, almost it's like this, you know. It's like, <laughs> unfortunately, it's like at a gangland somewhere, right? <laughs> There's people who's been in a gang for a long time. And then you just came into the gang, or you're trying to join the gang. Can you believe it? I mean, people think of local Bible-believing church like a gang. I mean, if you're not part of them, you get alienated, right? Yeah. You get made fun of. Yes. You get talked about. And if you don't conform to their way, I don't know. I don't know. Anywhere in the Bible it says people have to conform to our way. I thought That's they had to right. conform to the way of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You let your traditions and your selfish, fleshly ways come in the way. Like, oh, if they don't do it our way, you know. No. And then how many times new believers' hearts have been broken because of your selfish ways? Many. Because of your selfishness. But you're supposed to edify. You have to admonish, especially new brethren. Yes. I mean, they're so, how should I say, you know, fragile, yes. especially the faith. A lot of them just got saved. And believe it or not, many of them who got saved, who hasn't done anything to, for the Lord, they're still fragile, just babies, right? Yes. And all you could do is just criticize, 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 and criticize. And that's all you do, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's not your job to criticize, right? No. If, they, if something needs to be spoken to another brother or sister, that's why God puts shepherds in the church. Amen. That's why, you know, pastors can talk to them. It's not your job. Don't ever think, like, again, you know, 
spoiled brats at the church. I grew up in the church. Time for me to tell everybody what to do. <laughs> I'm mean, like, wow. I didn't know. I mean, that was the rule in the church, right? I mean, where does it say in the Bible that you grew up in the church, you have all the authority? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, a lot of times, like, church goers make their own rules, especially in a Bible-believing church. It's not your job. Right. I mean, your job is to, again, love your brethren like your own selves. Can you do that? Do you love your wives and husbands like your own self? I mean, you guys are half and half, right? Lord, help me. I mean, start from there. Yes. I mean, children, I mean, your parents, do you love your parents like you should? Instead of you always thinking, because you're so selfish, children, uh, how can mom and dad make me better today? That's all you think about. I need better hair products. <laughs> I need better clothes. And you could drive me. I need a better car. You know, those days, you know, old days when, I'm, when my parents were driving pickup trucks and, you know, bitten, old bitten, you know, cars, you know, driving Pintos and all those things, you know, cars that are 15, 20 years old, those days are gone. I need to have the newest car possible. At least let me choose, you know. Let me go to this Carfax, you know, all those places, Carvana or something. You know, let me choose. <laughs> That's what commercial says. Yes. Commercial says you could afford it, you know. Yeah. I mean, they don't know anything. They're so selfish, right? When was the last time, children, you thought about how can I, you know, make my parents better today? You're all selfish, so you're just yourself. And parents, same thing. Instead of, how can I make my children better today? All you're thinking about, how can my parents make me feel? I mean, make me better today, right? They need to please me at all costs, even if it's against the word of God, right? I mean, we talk about it. I know education should be number one. But you know what? I'm an Asian parent. I'm a Hispanic parent. You know, I'm a Caucasian parent. I'm all kinds of parent. Education is number one. I don't care if they miss church, study more. I don't care if they don't pray or read their Bible, study more. They could make it up later in their life. Ask the children who went through that if they don't regret spending more time in the Word of God in the church when parents are forcing them to just study and study and study. I mean, what comes off of it? Nothing. Amen. They commit more sin during that time. Yes. I mean, children are, because they're trying to please their parents so much, they're so pressured. Countries like Korea, Japan, all those places, they just say, you know what? I'm sorry, mommy, daddy. You know, I couldn't please you, so I'm going to kill myself. Jump up the buildings, you know, jump in front of the trains. Common, you know die of, what is it, carbon monoxide, smoke in the car, you know. I mean, that's the reality. And don't think that it doesn't happen in a Bible-believing families. It happens. It's, it happens. Yes. Why? Because you are so selfish. Amen. You don't think about others. I mean, if you and I start off each day, again, there's already given baseline, right? Spending time with the Lord, praying the Lord first, everything. That's baseline. And then your first question is, how can I make someone better today? Then your life will be changed. When you see lost souls out there, you're going to do something about it. Yeah. How can you make that lost soul better? By giving them the gospel. By witnessing to them. That's how you make them Better. Right. Not making them, not making them laugh, not make, taking them to some places, not going to a happy hour together. That's not going to make them better. Only way you could make unsaved people better is by preaching the gospel. Amen. That's it. Yes. Amen. I mean, are you even doing that? I mean, you do it during street preaching. You do it when we go out there and, you know, with the brethren and stuff. But when you're all alone, 
or when your family is all alone? I mean, do you ever do it? I mean, do you want to make that law so better? Yes. I mean, Lord has commended us to do it. Amen. I mean, then are you doing it? And you're like, ah, I don't feel good today. <laughs> Everybody doesn't feel good some days, right? Yeah. But some of you, you don't feel good almost all the time when it's time to preach the gospel, right? <laughs> I feel more tired today. My tongue doesn't move like it should, you know. Yeah, you know, like everything, you know. I don't know. When it comes to making someone better, do you really think that's like most important thing in your life, right? Again, if you truly knew why you're created, created for Lord's pleasure, why you were saved, and why you are here to preach the gospel to others, how can you not think about making someone better today? And after the lost souls, what about your brethren around you? If I were to ask anybody here, are you making your brothers and sisters in Christ better today? Or are you that mole? Are you that leaven making other brothers and sisters in Christ worse? You're like, how do I do that? I mean, all you have to do is be doers of the word, not hearers only. Yes, sir. Then you can make other brethren better. And it comes from your heart. I mean, how many times do I have to hark on the heart? All the time. Amen. Yeah, because our heart is most deceitful Amen. above all things. Right. I mean, it's my heart, it's your heart yes. that always deceives each other. Yes. That's why you have to examine yourself on a daily basis. I mean, with your actions, brethren, during these last days, are you making other Christians better? And I'm not talking about carnal things. You know, we got to get out of that carnality, yes. right? I mean, spiritually speaking, yes. are you making them better? Help us, Lord. I mean, are you with your actions, right? I mean, there are, and then stop asking, you know, this rhetorical questions. You already know the answers. If you don't, read more Bible. Amen. Study more. You know, have more biblical conversation amongst yourself. Yes. Are you making that sister sitting there better today as an older sister? Are you making that younger brother better today as an older brother in Christ? Are you making that older brother better today as a, someone who's been at church longer than that older brother or sister? You know, are you? Man, we talked about hospitality, you know, fervent in prayer for each other. I mean, just simple things. I mean, are you really hospitable to each other? <laughs> okay. Well, what's this, what word does hospitality have? Hospital. What happens in hospital? People get cared for. Yes. I mean, do you truly care for each other like in a hospital? Like a you know, tender-hearted doctor or nurse really caring for each other. Because if they don't, some patient's going to die. Yeah. Right? I mean, some brethren are spiritually dying for many things happening in their life. Yes. I mean, are you giving them any type of, you know, care, hospitality to them? And you got to be fervent in prayer, right? Yes. I mean, during these last days, if you want to make someone better, and especially inside the, you know, Bible-believing, you know, brethren, you have to do one thing. You have to pray. How are you going to make anybody better without prayer? You can't go before prayer. Like, you can't be like, ah, that brother's having a tough time. You know, I'm just going to, with, with my, all my know-hows, you know, I'm going to just make him, you know, get right with the Lord, right? You know, I mean, get better. But you don't even pray. So you have to fervently pray for each other. Again, 
then you could get rid of some of the selfishness away. When you start fervently, again, what's the common characteristic of Laodicean age? Everybody's just lukewarm. Right. You know, yes. You're just lukewarm. You're not cold. You're not hot. You're like, you mention someone's name. I'm praying for John Doe, Lord. And that's it. You don't get into any details. You don't have any sincerity in your heart. But you have to be hot. Being fervent means hot. When you're hot, you know, you're going to put all your effort into it. Yes. And you're going to give your all when you're praying for each other. Right? Don't just say it with words only, though. I'm not myself, you know, we all get into this, you know, pitfalls out there. We, we talk well. A lot of people talk a good game, right? Yes. I'm praying for you, brother. I'm praying for you, sister. But do you really? Mm. I mean, should we play? You know, your video of your life. I pray for you every day. Don't ever say I pray for you all the time either. Oh. Because you're a liar, yes. right? Because you don't pray at every opportunity. You know, I, mean, I pray, you know, when I remember. Maybe that's a better answer. Amen. Because, but you don't remember that often. So, you know, I don't know if that's the bestest answer either. <laughs> you have to put your brethren in your fervent prayer. If you really want someone to get better today, you have to. Yes, sir. And it can't be two-second prayer. You, you ask, how can people pray for such a long time, you know, on their knees, right? When I could only think about subject to pray for myself, and those are a few minutes and I'm done. You know why? You know why, like, preachers, missionaries, and all those people, you know, pray for such a long time because they're praying for others. They're praying for you, every single person sitting here. They're praying for missionaries out there. They're praying for lost souls out there. They're praying for ministry. They're praying for a lot of things. And fervent prayers goes long. Prime example, George Mueller, right? He just prayed and prayed and prayed. Look at Daniel, prayed and prayed and prayed. Get David, pray, pray, pray. Look at Apostle Paul, pray, 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 pray. I mean, countless people who made other people better, whether they're Christians, becoming a better Christian, or lost souls, you know, leading them to the Lord, they were people of prayer. They prayed and prayed and prayed. And you say, I hear this too many times. No, you don't hear it enough. You literally have to hear it every single day. You have to pray. Pray. You have to pray more. Pray. Pray. The reason you have a fruitless Christian life is because you don't think about making others better today. You're that selfish Christian who will end up at the judgment seat of Christ just regretting all your days. And especially all those days when you know, preachers are preaching to you when God is pricking your heart, you know, Holy Spirit is, you know, telling you, hey, stop being selfish. No more selfish, man. No more, no more, no more. You know, you got to start practice brotherly love. Others, 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 Amen. right? Get rid of your selfishness. You know, put that old nature, your flesh, you know, leave it there in the cross. You know, follow the new nature and follow everything that, you know, Bible said you should do as a new man. Yes. Then you're like, oh, wow. You know, Lord, thank you for giving me opportunity. You know, and I'm like just a sinner, nothing. But, you know, thank you for giving me opportunity to live for others. Right? I could at least make someone better in very little way. I don't, I'm just a tool, but Lord does everything. Amen. Then you become that vessel that Bible talks about. Right? You give all the glory to God. Yes. But you're so also so thankful to God that God is using you Amen. to make someone better in your life. You know, the greatest, I think, feeling, besides from seeing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in heaven, is seeing souls out there who got better, 
who were saved from hell because of you. Because God used you. Because you gave that track. Because you gave him that word of God. Because you're preaching out in the street. Because you are praying for them. I mean, wouldn't that be the best thing for all eternity? Yeah. When someone comes up to you and like, thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. And you're like, I don't even know you, you know. But man, you know that day? You know, here, let me play for you. Maybe we might have that function in heaven, right? Yeah, yeah. We could go to certain days, you know. I mean, if there's no more sin, like, oh, yeah, you know, like, you know, 1995, you know, at 12 p.m., you know, at a fast food restaurant, you know, you gave me this track. And I was about to kill myself, you know, I had such a horrible things, but I read that track, man, and I got saved. Yeah. And then, wow, you know, I mean, glory to God right yeah. away, you know, you start running the aisles and in heaven, you know, praising the Lord's name, you know, throwing crowns at his feet. I mean, that's what you want. Yes. Instead, you don't want to be that unfaithful servant at the judgment seat of Christ. Selfish, selfish, selfish. Right? Have you made anybody better in your life? I mean, are you making someone better? Or did you ever make someone better? Your family's worse because of you. Your children are worse because of you. Your husband and wife are worse because of you. Right? Your grandma, grandparents, your co workers, everybody's worse because of you. Man, what happened? Right? You're just hitting the ground, wailing and crying, you know, you're in shame. You're constantly saying, you know, Lord, I'm so sorry, Lord, I'm so sorry, Lord, you know. I mean, is that the way you want to be found? No. Is that the way you want to have as your legacy as a Christian? No, You sir. don't. That's why you and I have an opportunity. As long as we are living and breathing, as long as we have this life, Opportunity to serve the Lord, you can make someone better today. So one thing to remember during these last days, are you making someone better today? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, many days go by in this Laodicean age. So-called Bible-believing Christians are just full of themselves, full of knowledge and pride, just puffed up doing nothing to make people around them better. Instead, just being selfish, looking at their self-interest all the time, Lord. Help us to reflect on our life. Help us to examine our ways. And help us to just get right with you, Lord. Confess our sins of being so selfish, proud, thinking all-knowing is the, our attitude. Help us to humble ourselves, just glorifying you, pleasing you, and spending time with you in the Word of God as our baseline, and go out there and make someone better. In our homes, make someone better. Help us to just have love for the lost souls out there. Making them better is to just preaching the gospel, leading them to you, Lord. Help us understand that and instill in our heart. And amongst brethren, Lord, help us to have that brotherly love. I mean, others in the Word. Instead of being so selfish, looking at our self-interest at all times. I pray that during these last days, we'll just remember this, Lord. And above all, Lord, even so, come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.